This is the Concord Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. It's Tuesday, September 5th, uh, 2023, and it is 5.01 p.m. And we will begin with a roll call, uh, call to order by roll call. Linda Escobedo. Present. Mike Lawson. Present. Rich Feely. Present. Uh, Carrie Healy will not be at the meet. Uh, Carrie, I did I do that again? Carrie Lafleur, I'm looking right at it. Will not be here uh, for this meeting, and Keith Bergman again is. So welcome, uh, welcome to uh, to the town's risk compliance manager and legislative liaison, Chris Carmody, who, who I'm pre pre pleased uh, to have uh, his uh, pre uh, attendance here and for his assistance. Uh, uh, in uh, as we'll talk about more uh, in getting our uh, grant application to the uh, CPC uh, to the finish line. So thanks, Chris, for your help on on that. Uh, first uh, item of business is approval of minutes, and I have a set from our August twenty second meeting, which I actually sent out on August twenty third. So it might have been a while that. Uh, since you saw them, but uh, if I wonder if there is a, a motion to, and I will say that um, in attendance for that meet, uh, uh, Rich was not in attendance for that me meeting, but the rest of us were. So if it comes to a motion and a vote, so is there a motion to approve those uh, minutes? Moved. Motion by Mike. Is there a second? By, by Linda. I guess that's me, yes. <laughs> Very good. One of these days we'll reverse that order, but or, or but the night the, the night is young too, so plenty of plenty of opportunities for making motions tonight. Uh any uh discussion? All right. Uh we'll do a roll call vote. Uh Linda. Aye. Mike. Aye. Uh Rich is abstaining. And uh, Keith uh, votes aye, so that uh, is approved by a vote of three to nothing, with one abstention. And uh, well, and welcome back, um, welcome back, Rich, who uh, traveled, uh, who who traveled so far he that uh, that he got his picture in the Concord Bridge. So. Um, as did as did others on the call. So there you go. Uh, so so very good. And for those watching at home, it's easy to do. It's you know everyone can play and just hold it up like this. Uh, all right. Next we have, and I should say that uh, Liz Rust will be with us uh, by about uh, five five fifteen. Uh, and uh, for, appreciate that the uh, the regional housing. Uh, service office director. Uh, what I wanted to start out with, and our, our main event actually are things that we need to do before noon on Friday is the theme for, for today's meeting on September 5th. Last time we met, the uh, trust authorized the chair to submit uh, grant applications uh, to the CPC and to, to the town's ARPA funds for uh, up to $500,000 from both uh, sources uh, for uh, to implement the housing uh, production plan. And we're gonna talk about uh, that uh, 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 some more tonight, that there is, uh, there is a draft application for the uh, CPC, uh, the Community Preservation Committee uh, application, uh, or the deadline rather is this Friday, September, uh, September 8th at, um, at noon. And so I had uh, circulated a draft uh, document and a couple of drafts over the last couple of weeks, I think, but what, what I want to start out doing, though, is just a quick recap of the August 28th select board meeting, because that's referenced in the grant application. And, and on that uh, evening, the select board unanimously voted to approve the, the policy statement that the trust 
had adopted on uh, August 22nd for proposed spending plan to implement production uh, uh, strategies in the in the housing production plan. And it's it's threefold. It's that they're supporting uh, the trust and allocating funds to advance certain projects this year as those projects become ready to proceed and for which we'll be in, inviting uh, uh, funding applications at some point. Second, uh, the, the select board supported the, the trust in reserving other of our trust funds to advance projects that are anticipated to be uh, ready on a on a, a, a later time frame, either later this year or, or beyond. Um, and thirdly, they also encourage the trust to apply uh, to submit those two grant applications to to the CPC and and for ARPA funds uh, that uh, that we um, that we have voted to do, and to uh, and to urge us to uh, continue to. Uh, pursue state authorization for a real estate transfer fee and a building permit surcharge, which would be in the long run, uh, we hope dedicated funding sources for the trust so that we would not need to uh, get uh, an annual uh, funding at uh, town meeting. So with that policy approval by the select board, I, I hope that our goal for today can be can be to be to begin to determine how we're going to put our trust funds to work uh, creating affordable housing, and particularly so that we can communicate that plan in the grant application, starting with the CPC that we're submitting this Friday, because I think it's important for us to have a, a vision of what what do we need the additional money for, uh, uh, and and where does that all um, figure? So I hope during our discussion tonight that, that we might be able to begin to identify projects for which we, uh, which we would uh, allocate or reserve funds to at least check off what those are, uh, and, as well as to indicate those projects on our radar screen that we would not be advancing with trust funds. Um, and I think all of that's important um, so that we can convince a funding agency like the Community Preservation Committee how far our current funds will go and what, what more we would do with the additional uh, funds we're requesting. And um, so that's what I'm hoping to do. At some point, I'm going to put a chart up on the, on the, um, on the screen, but I'm wondering if there are any opening thoughts that folks have about what we can uh, accomplish tonight uh, or any initial feedback you have on the grant on the grant application that is uh, going in. Uh, Linda? Yeah, um, first of all, um, I, it was Chris, right, who did a lot of work on this. Is that correct? Well, I, I think I added just a few people. It's not mostly Keith's work, but yeah, I was happy to assist thank, where I could. Thank you for doing that. Um, so I thought overall it was well done. Um, I had a couple, um, technical questions as well as strategy questions. So before we leap into yeah. that list, and if I'm following your drift right now. Yeah, you, sure. Let's yeah bring, bring up your, whatever issues you have right, right now would be great. You're anticipating that this list will be modified perhaps to accompany the proposal, is that correct? That yeah, that's it. There's a there's a list uh, uh, with uh, and my suggestions are that we um, we uh, at least put a check mark next to projects that we think are might be ready to to go in the first cycle. Others that we'd want to reserve funds for. I think uh, we we might also uh, uh, yeah, and so that that's the main thing and and. And in that, there will be projects perhaps that don't get check marks. And I think that's important for us to do as well. Okay. So um, this is a general comment. I, I think that it applies to the whole proposal. Um, in, in a, there's one section, uh, paragraph or two, that speaks to, um, presumes that these are the criteria that CPC uses in uh, reviewing housing. 
And we define in their criteria, community housing is 80%. Now we may have a, a tacit agreement with them on the funds that already came to us. Yes. It would be limited to 80%, but community housing per CPC clearly is up to 100%. Absolutely. I agree with the definition of community preserve, uh, community housing in the statute. Yeah. So so because we the paragraph is worded in such a way that it it presumes what's the criteria that CPC uses in reviewing housing proposals. Yes. I think that either that perhaps needs to be worded a little differently there um, is one suggestion I would make. Um and I think it not only does it come up in that section, but that reference to community housing comes up in a couple different places. Um, yeah, I think the term appears in here as a for, quote affordable community housing unquote, which is which the which is actually a term that doesn't exist in the law, but it exists in the our grant agreement, our existing grant agreement with the 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 CPC, and it's what the town meeting vote said and. It was during the course of negotiating the terms of the grant agreement after town meeting that we all came to the common understanding that what the CPC meant by putting affordable community housing in the in the town meeting article is that they meant to restrict it to 80% of, of AMI, notwithstanding that community housing not modified by the word affordable means 100%. So, so I guess what I'm saying is it was my thought, since they gave us a million dollars under those terms, I was presuming that we ought to ask for any additional funds on the same terms. Yeah, so I've, I've tracked everything that's, you know, it's consistent with what I understood has happened previous to this time. I, I, we may just want to tweak that wording just a little bit because of the way that particular pair section is written. And I, I hear you um, yeah. in, in terms of we would like to, um, we are defining our request on this basis. Yeah. Kind of, and well, I, I guess maybe that, the, and, and that's just what I wrote. It, it's not a policy uh, in, in, in drafting this grant application that that's that was sort of my decision to do that and i guess I, i'm i'm doing you know brain check here on is that is everyone okay with that or do you want to go for something for, frankly higher than 80% uh which um i don't we won't have that restriction in the arpa funding application that we put forward but i took it as a strong signal that uh the the the, uh, the CPC wanted wants units counted on the subsidized housing inventory with their money. So, I I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I don't disagree with that uh, outcome. Yeah, it's just how we address it there. Um, but as you said, you've couched it with term affordable. Yeah, that, that's the key. I mean, maybe I'll I'll put it in. I'll, if it's not in quotes, I'll put, make sure it's in quotes uh, because it's a it's a term, it's a term of art that exists only in a in, a, in our common understanding with this what exists only in CPC's understanding of what they meant by the term. And then and then an, another um, thing I reacted to when I read it each of the iterations that came down um, had to do with the um, in that same section or or maybe a section close to that yeah. we, we encourage the CPC to we also encourage the CPC to recommend these projects and what was not clear to me reading that if I you know it's I think I yeah. understood what your intent was. Yeah. But um, I'm wondering if we need to say something to the effect um, as housing projects typically require multiple funding sources. 
Well, I, I, I guess my answer, the one that I would was proposing to put a check mark next to is for, is for the uh, annual funding for the Re Regional Housing Services Office, yep. which won't come from us, will not come from us. Right. It will come from the town and, and, and the CPC, I hope, but that it wouldn't, but since it's on our radar screen, only because it's, well, because it's implementing one of the housing production plan strategies, I thought this might just be an opportune time for us to say, well, you know what, we're in favor of that. Uh, we're in favor of the CPC doing its annual funding for- so Let me use uh, so. ARPA, ARPA as an example. Um, you know, is it possible that they go both places for funding? Meaning uh, CPC and, and the trust. There's Liz weighing in. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just saying hi. I just joined the meeting. Just want to say hi, everybody. Hello. We're hi, hi, hi Liz. We're we were uh, discussing. Um, all right. Well, why don't I let uh, Linda continue, and then we'll we're we're going through a dra the draft uh, uh, our draft uh, uh, so, grant application to the CPC. Yeah, Linda. Once we rework our list that we're going to include um, with this. Uh, proposal um I I guess that I guess the question I have is do we want to be in the position that CPC considers funding a project that we may also fund and I think in the past that's been the intent intent but I don't know if that was the intent here because it does it isn't yeah. quite clear that that's what is being said. Yeah, and I, I guess maybe, and I'm I'm uh, I'm f figuring out the the main thing is what I'm meaning to do is to um, talk about active applications that they will have in front of them in this round. So maybe that could be done by just, and it's only based on what my assumption is of who else is submitting housing applications to the CPC. We, we won't know. I don't is is the town submitting. A funding application for uh, for the uh, rental housing program to CPC. If they were, we you know I'd I'd be I'd be glad to have us support it, uh, and uh, would frankly favor that over having trust funds be used to to do so. Yeah, I mean the the I think the that program has been talked about as being spearheaded by the community services coordinator. Um, she's out today and uh, I'll talk touch base with her tomorrow, but I talked with the CBC, uh, CPC staffer today and she was um, unaware of any applications like that, mm -hmm. um, either yeah. anticipated or, or received. Um, so I think it's, it's possible. It, I, I'm not sure how likely an application for that particular program will be prepared this week, but I, we just need to touch base with the um, the town social worker. Yeah, and if it is, I assume uh, it would be for sixty and under, because that's her bailiwick, right? Right. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. When I you don't... say sixteen hundred, what do you mean sixteen hundred? 60 age 60 and under would be her for for affordable uh um, for, um, for rental housing oh i was not aware of that i was not right, aware I mean, of that either yeah. right so we i mean we have an interim coa director right now and it's it's entirely possible that the, that the um the town social workers you know may be working on a program that, oh, um, so it's like an elder services staff person that put it forward. So this is the assumption that that it must be for elder people. And and I guess may, maybe what I'm I'm confusing by by suggesting that we should vote to support other people's rec uh, um, applications. Maybe I'm actually getting us ahead of ahead of themselves because if they're not putting in an application or they're not ready to. Um, that's, fu that's fine too, uh, that, that, uh, but I did want to send this, but at, at least around the, uh, affordable rental housing, 
I would I would want to send the signal and hope that we can that that's not appropriate. Well, it's my it would be my vote not to support tr use of trust funds for a a recurring uh, since we are we are a non recurring revenue uh, source. We have to go back. We we don't have any dedicated funds that we ought not to support a a uh, a, re a recurring uh, 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 revenue program. One-time things, in my in my view, like uh, uh, repairs that happen in the in the CHDC small grant repair program, I I I'm fine with I'm fine with using trust funds for that. Uh, I'm I would not be fine with uh, it's an established program. I would not be fine with with us. Uh, spending trust funds when we when uh, the priority really for us is adding units. The main the main priority of what we're doing is adding units to the uh, to the subsidized housing inventory. At least that's what I think we're here for. And if so, then a project like the um, affordable rental program doesn't wouldn't fare well here, but it might fare well fare better elsewhere. And um, and if someone isn't putting in a grant application by this Friday because they're not ready, that's an answer too. Uh, that that we're you know other funding you know the CPC requires readiness by Friday, and if and that's but presumably there's all there's ARPA or something else. But uh, maybe maybe what we should do is focus on the. Our main list of projects that, yeah, Rich, hand up. Yeah, I just want to say I feel very strongly that our job is to create as many units as possible at the bottom end of the housing spectrum in in Concord, and that we're a capital projects agency, and we should not be supporting a Section Eight type program. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Section Eight, but our job is to get more units not to simply help out people who are in the existing units. So I, I'm basically siding with you on that one, Keith. I, I don't think that should be a priority for us, nor do I think we should be asking CPA for money for it. Yeah. Th thanks. Um, thanks, Rich. Uh, other comments? Or Linda, did you have others that you wanted to go over? Um. It's a strategy question. Sure. Um, when we say to see in our CPC application that we're um, going to apply to ARPA as well, I, I, I don't get it. Well, because they they watch select board meetings. Uh, it's not this, we can't we can't conceal that fact. Um you know, I don't. I don't think we should conceal it, but I also I do think we should make it perfectly clear that that was our in our memorandum uh, to the select board, which they approved and encouraged us to do. So it isn't isn't just alone us coming up with the idea of doing it, but it was supported by the select board. At least that's what I recall. Yeah, that's that's what uh, the the third bullet of our of our policy was. It says that we're applying for both, and I'm I'm not. And since that's you know common knowledge among those who are following this, uh, you know, it, it actually it more begs the question, which I'm not sure I gave the right answer, but I gave an answer, and I I'll stick with it. Uh, uh, Terry Ackerman uh, asked at the select board meeting whether uh, in applying for um, half a million to both of those places, does that mean that we need a million? Uh, and I said, well, I think our, you know, our, I said, and maybe it's not the case if others differ, that our fundraising goal was, ha was half a million and we're applying in two places to get it. Well, I won't turn down the million. But I think it's uh, I think it's I'm guessing it's unlikely for us to uh, hope to get that much out of collectively. 
And the other part of that is that this, this grant application requires us to admit to what our budget is. So I'm saying our budget is a, a $3.6 million effort of which five, we have 3.1 million in hand and we're requesting in this grant 500,000. So that's 3.6. Yeah, I think that's correct, although the way you phrase it, which I believe is correct, Keith, it, it's a, it, it could be an easy way for a CPC to say good luck with ARPA. Exactly. So should we we should rescind the vote to 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 uh I, I'm not getting that at all. So we should rescind the vote uh or to apply for ARPA funds. No, we shouldn't. No, we should, we should just uh, not tell anyone we're doing that. Well, is it a problem? We know, you know, when things move, you know, all of the money we've got now will be needed to su subsidize Junction Village. We've yeah. got Azabit Bluff. We've got the chance to buy the Route 2 property, et cetera. I mean, there's yeah. no question that over a three to five year period, right. We can use way more than this, right. and we're not going to get it except from CPC and ARPA until such time as we get a transfer fee. Right. Well, I, th you know, I actually think there's a simple solution here, and it's to say that our total project budget is 4.1 million, of yeah. which we have 3.1 now, and we're requesting two agencies to give us half a million each. And then we see how close we can come to that. How about that? Would that be all right? That doesn't give anyone a disincentive. That's well, right to me. I, I rather like the way Rich just phrased it. And that is, here's what we know, but we know there's going to be more coming. and We know we're going to need the money. And the purpose of this trust was to be able to act as quickly as we can without right. going uh, back to town meeting for an additional war article weather. So, right, yeah, and in fa and in fact, the other part of this and the what what's difficult is that when you come to add up what the costs are of the projects, I don't have any. I I've got big holes in that equation because we don't know. Uh, we don't know what it's going to. We we know that. We know very few things. We know that the CHDC is requesting 1.5 million uh, for uh, to complete Asabet River Bluff, and 50,000 for pre-development for Junction Village. Uh, maybe we should plug in a number, uh, plug in a placeholder for development of Junction Village as well, so that we can make clearer what. Um, you know, what our goal might be. Um, Since you just referenced um, ARB as a, an example, um, Lee has now said publicly in two different meetings, 1.2 million or less. And so I think he's trying to put that message out there. And so, I, I, you know, I mentioned this one other time, I feel that us putting the 1.5 doesn't help if there's a, if, if they're working with a strategy there. I guess I'd ask Liz, uh, Russ, since she's on the call, is the only thing I have in writing is a memo of 1.5, so. And that's correct. That's the only thing that there is in writing. Certainly yeah. that was written as the, you know, like the the high the high water mark. It's always easier to come down, um, but there's no um, details um, for the specifics there. As you know, that, that it hasn't gone out to RFP yet. So there's been no developer and there's been no construction bidding. Um, so, and I think that there's further, you know, work that's going to be done, but I wouldn't revise down from that memo. And that memo was done intentionally with the 1.5. Yeah. So what do you make of, uh, um, Lee's, I appreciate your comments uh, as always. Mm -hmm. What do you make of, of Lee's recent comments where you said that twice now in two different meetings um i you know i don't i don't know i can sort of talk to him but i, I um i guess my concern is that you know as widely circulated as all this information is uh -huh. i i don't want it to be counter to whatever yep i understand that i appreciate that 
Yeah. Well, I think we can draw a distinction between what it may cost to build those three units and the net after there's some credit for what the people who move in can pay. In other words, what their, you know, what their uh, repayment, you know, the proceeds, the proceeds of the sales. Yes. Yeah, right. There's a lot of factors that go into it, the, the construction costs, the developer um, buy down piece, and then the monies that were already appropriated from CPA. Um, so um, there's a lot of those factors that go in, but I don't think that, um, and I'll, I'll confirm with Lee if he wants to formally revise his estimate. And I think if he does so, they, they will revise the memo to the trust so it's on paper and it, it follows that. So it's not, um, you know, so it's consistent. Yeah. So you have the most consistent pieces of information. I, and I just want to mention also the small grant request is also from the CHGC. It was in that same memo. There were three portions of the request all to the trust. Right. Yes. Th thanks for, thanks for mentioning the third and all, all three of those I'm looking to uh, put check marks next to in the uh, in the column of uh, where we would allocate the funds and invite a formal application. Perfect, thank um, you. And 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 uh, what and we're sort of we're having the same discussion. We're, we're I think we're about to have the same discussion we had two weeks ago when, um, or 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 at least. Uh, what what would be helpful for me, and maybe we should talk about this strategy. What's the best way, do, do you think, to communicate to the uh, to the CPC in in this grant application that we've got three million dollars worth of projects, which are either re uh, ready a minimum of th three million. I think we actually need to say that we have four. Five million dollars worth of projects, some number, and have it mean something, and to be and and to be able to answer a question, uh, you know, at least with the back of the envelope calculation. Well, where did those numbers come from? Even if it's not, I mean, no one has submitted a formal grant application to us because no one because none of the projects have reached the point where they have all of the information they need to plug in a number. And that's fine with us. We're just looking to have, you know, a series of placeholders here. But, um, you know, if if it's that, even to say something like, "Well, we want to we want to allocate uh, two million dollars in trust funds this year, and we want to allocate to be able to do two million in trust funds next year," uh, for which we need a million an, another million dollars. Uh, and then to somehow show that we've got in that example at least four million dollars worth of projects. So what are people's thought on? Um, I mean, for me, it's just check marks uh, on a project. Say, okay, Asabet, uh Junction Village pre-development and the CHDC small grants. Those are three full grant applications I'd like to see, uh, and put a you know come up with a number. Do we want to say the total of that is 1.5 of those is 1.5 or put in something else and uh, another project in and, and bring it up to, uh, to uh, 2 million or um, so we're not hanging any dollar amount on a particular project, but we are indicating broadly that we've got, as I say, at least if we, if we're looking for a budget of 4.1 million, uh, then we've got that many projects on the board. Hey, the three that you just ticked off again, please. Uh, uh, Assabet, River Bluff, completing the three units. Junction Village, pre-development. I could suppose we could say pre-development and development and inflate that big, although that, although I'll back up. The development of Junction Village really needs to be, I think, in the reserve category uh, of funds that we reserve later because it's not going to be ready. So pre-development of Junction Village and the CHDC small grant program for 50000 And not uh, Novo? Not Novo in the top three? I'm sorry? Not Novo in the top three? 
No, I would put that in. Well, we could, we could. That very, I was thinking it would be reserved, but, but late breaking news, which I haven't read in the newspaper yet, uh, that uh, the uh, Novo uh, received their uh, site approval from Mass Housing on uh, August 18th, and they promptly filed their application with the ZBA on August 21st. So there's going to be a hearing scheduled at some point soon because uh, there's a time limit for when the hearing has to be held or else it's, there, there's an automatic grant of the of the of the uh, of the comprehensive permit application. Um, and so that project's moving forward. Yes, excellent suggestion, Linda. I would I would add I, it's it's now ripe. I when I wrote it, I was um, things had not proceeded as quickly, but yes, the Novo should be on that list too. Thank you. And uh, higher on that list, I would think. Well, it's well, it's a function of uh, how quickly with the select board, how quickly is the developer going to get through the process with the with the. Uh, uh, with the uh, ZBA, but certainly if the select board negotiated an agreement this fall uh, and said, here are the things that we want uh, the developer to do, which the ZBA can't require them to do. And in return, here's here's money that the town is willing to put on the table for um, uh, to... Uh, to go towards the, the bottom line of the project. Great, yeah, excellent suggestion, thank you. Well, then it may end up being top priority. May, and and, and uh, other thoughts on, um, other people have lists of what they, what projects they'd want to uh, see uh, uh, proceed this year and that we think will be ready to go in this fiscal year? Well, my concern is not that this will be ready to go, but, you know, the town a long time ago appropriated $2 million to subsidize Junction Village. And there's no way, you know, uh, they declined to let us come up with the extra million, but it's going to take two, three, four million, five million dollars, you know, in local money to make this happen. And I think Liz has seen that in some of our other towns. So yeah, the money we're actually gonna lay out this year may only be 50 or 100 for pre-development, but we've gotta be able to come up with, I would think at least three or 4 million uh, over a period of two or three years to actually subsidize, the, make the commitment because nobody's gonna break ground unless they know where the town's contribution is coming from. Right, and that and that the uh, development of uh, Junction Village is really, uh, uh, while it's an imprecise number, that there's, I'm I'm sure general agreement, it's going to be a big number, and it's that, a big uh, number, and the land has been sitting around for ten years. It's in a good place for this kind of project. We heard from at least one developer who's potentially interested. This one's live, it seems to me, and with a little luck, could require significant financial commitments within 18 months to two years, I would think. Liz, is that a reasonable statement? Um, the CHC intends to issue an RFP this fall and um, to see, but I think the CHDC is open to any number of kinds of development, what be it like a townhouse style or larger apartment buildings, um, and see what comes forward. Right. Right. Yeah. But there's no way any of those are going to happen without two or three million dollars of, uh, of of town funds that I can see. Because I don't really know what the numbers precisely are. It really would depend on the number of units, but um, yeah, right. with the but, requirement that they're all restricted, of course, each one comes with it with the subsidy. And um, yeah, yeah, because they are all they got to be restricted. So That's great. You know, I'm just, I, I, I think it would be quite clear that it's going to be 
at least the order of magnitude of the original Junction Village project and, yeah. and yeah. likely more. No yeah. reason to think it wouldn't, but it's yeah. it's not clear. And the time frame, I think, is probably the least clear part. Even if there's some understanding of the magnitude of what we're talking about, um, it's really the um, the amount where the rest of the money is coming from and waiting for that, right? Like, you know, that the, the, the state money takes a long time to come through. So if it's state money that's being looked for there, that, that's a long haul. That's another, you know, some number of years. Yeah, How would it not be state money? Um, I, I don't know. You know, you could propose a home ownership project that is moderate income and small number of units. Would you do that with that land? I thought the there you was could. Some... you could. Who knows what's many things could be proposed. Whether that's desirable or not, I'm just saying that uh, you know there are many different scenarios. But what was the condition under which the the state gave the land to the town? Just well, that it's restricted. Not yeah, rental well, or ownership, right? Well, it says it has to be affordable housing as defined by the CHP. Yeah. So yeah. that could mean a lot. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so um, yeah, um, it could. I don't know. I think the time frame is just really what's uncertain. So, in terms of you reserving funds for something that feels like a long reservation. Yeah. For you. And it's a long time before those units are created and it kind of ties up your your somewhat limited funding, in my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. It's it, it would put us back to where we were, uh, or the project was of of, of collecting fun of Junction Village, of having funds set aside for project that where those funds sat idle for years. And yeah. I think we I think we want to avoid that. I, I I think the answer for Junction Village in the long term, for at least you know, saying something in a grant application is that uh, is that the uh, I in my opinion get, getting the dedicated funding source like the transfer fee would be would be a more realistic way to do it, or or town meeting funding you know a bond issue or something, but the but we won't the trust won't have funds that we can uh, rely on to set, I would submit, to set us to reserve funds for Junction Village when they'll need it for development. We're going to, we will have exhausted our $4 million by then. The $4 million we hope to have. So, so what that might, so I'm wondering if for starters, we can try to uh, reach some agreement on projects that we think are would be ready to go this year and for which we want to allocate funds. Um, I uh, I mentioned Asabet and Junction Village. Uh, Linda mentioned the uh, the Baker Ave 40B, which I would agree with. Uh, we had um, I'd skipped over the surplus state property, which might, which uh, is uh, assessed at or appraised rather, it's at, uh, somewhere in the six hundred thousands, and um, and I know that uh, the town manager has reached out directly to the lieutenant governor and and on that ask to uh, specifically to acquire the property for uh, less than market value. And, and it might be that that project might, might be one of the ones that is ready to, is, is ready to uh, proceed. I'm not sure what the number is, but that, that might be another project that's ready to go. Uh, and as well as the CHDCs for me, the, the small capital grants. Other, uh, uh, could I hear lists from other members? Uh, or Linda, was there anything else that you wanted to add before I go to others? Um, thank you. Just remind me, Keith, um, we're going to talk about those we think are re potentially ready for uh, FY25. FY yeah, FY24 and 25. Yeah. Okay. But for starters, I was, I was trying to see if we could at least... Uh, yeah. And then the second category is... 20, 
six and or just 20. Well, the, the first category is allocate. The second category is reserve. Okay. So that, that, so. Do you have years on that? Well, we, we, our policy said had the year 2024 for uh, fiscal 2024 for allocations and uh, 24 and beyond for reserving. No, I just wanted to double check that. That yeah. was, thank you. So, um, uh, Rich or Mike uh, who wants to go next with your lists. I'm fine with the list we forgot. So, with so if it were, uh, I, I've got uh, four pro, four building four. Uh, for land projects and and the uh, being Assabet Junction pre-development, uh, the uh, Baker Ave 40B support and uh, the surplus state property, those four plus CHDC Appreciate small smaller. capital grants. You're fine with that, Mike? Yes, I am. Okay, Rich. Yeah, um, the only thing I would say is that. Uh, I'm sure if we can come to an agreement with the state on the surplus land, they won't sell it to somebody else until we have money. In other words, I would think that could go into a reserve if we wanted there. My main concern is that I don't want us to get CHDC to the position that they have a decent uh, project for Junction Village and then we can't come up with the town's piece of it. But uh, if Liz really thinks it's that far off, I defer to her. Okay. Um, so, uh, and then uh, in... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Keith. Can I ask Liz a question? Sure, please. If if the RFPs are going to go out, Liz, for yep. Junction Village, when they come back, what degree of financial uh, information and potential needs will be articulated? Um, so we ask for the project budget, both on the sources and the uses. You know, what what would be the expenses and where would you get the the monies to cover the project? So we so would it, it could say something like town support. Exactly. Exactly. We would expect to see that. And we would specifically ask for how much local support is needed and how is that being leveraged with other forms of support. And if the RFPs go out this fall, when when will we have that information? I think that we would probably, we'll have to look at the exact timing. Um, it, uh, so the CHGC wants to put it out together with the um, Assabet River Bluff RFP. They want to do both at the same right. time. Um, and they've been uh, delayed on their permitting. So that's really been the hold up there. Um, but I think, um, and so you get the holidays and this, so, you know, maybe 60 days, 30 is probably a little short uh, to give people time, but but 60, I don't think more than 60 days, 45, okay. maybe something like that. It would really depend on on where, where it falls within uh, the November, December timeframe. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm gonna I'll share my screen to make sure I'm looking at the right document. Okay, you see that? This there here are uh, check marks uh, under the category of trust allocations and in invitations for um, for these. Uh, three projects, Assabet Junction, um, Surplus State Property, and the 40B, and CHDC. Um, so, um, and and I, some, some of those might end up being, as we we're talking about, not proceeding until, um, till, um, Next next year, but they very well could be could be ready. Um, and then I, here's where I gratuitously put a check mark of uh, of us uh, of the trust supporting the town's application for uh, CPC funding for the regional housing 
services um, <clears throat> application. Um, this is this is the is this the priority list again? No, this is they're in the order of H of of housing production plan strategy. So Nova was not on this list, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is right there. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only thing I would want to put a reserve after the uh, after the housing authority. Um, yeah. In other words, we certainly would su support them if they can come up with additional units. Um, so, I mean, it looks like we're not not going to do that. Or anyhow, okay, you just put the check mark. Yeah, I just yeah, because in the next column, uh, yeah, we could we could uh, reserve funds. Um, yeah. I mean, and and, um, and I and I'm not sure if there's uh, 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 and maybe I went too far with this, but on the just on the strength of a conversation walking with with Liz and Mike walking out of the select board meeting last week, uh, I heard that CHDC is going to need more money beyond the 233,000 that they have in um, currently for a buy for a buy down program. And, and if so, that, you know, that seems like something that we could reserve funds for as well. Liz, did you have any further, any thoughts on that um or or is the chdc going to return the 233 no nope, no nope. the chdc um is going to submit a cpa article this week to augment that to make it uh possible to buy down fund buy down you know units and create units should the opportunity arise yeah how much are they asking for um i think that that's still under discussion to create SHI units? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just have one thing to say there. I mean, uh, I am reluctant to take a 110 or 120 percent unit and put money into buying it down to 80 because we have a shortage in that category. Clearly, you know, the at median income or slightly above. And so I'm not sure if it's keeping it in the inventory at all, rather than having it go to market. That's one thing. Buying down from 110 to 80, I'm not sure I'm in favor of. I understand the argument because we we clearly need a range of affordable housing. I mean, I'm I'm not opposing having money for that i'm just you know if it goes through us i'm going to argue that right. we shouldn't you know be taking a if you will workforce housing unit and using trust or trust related funds to drive the the income level on that particular unit further down very good other uh other thoughts about what um uh so i'm going to I'll, I'll leave that. Well, it doesn't sound like they're coming to the trust of the money, so we don't need to put a check mark there. Um, the uh, funding feasibility sites, I think, deserves a check mark um, because we that is for us to have some of our own funds on account that if there is a particular site that comes up. I thought it was an excellent suggestion that Liz made about um, making sure there's money available if that happens. Thoughts on, um, are there other, are there, is there any other project that we can think for of putting in the category of reserving funds? And that is, Probably through the end of fiscal twenty five, um, I so I don't think that it's going to come to be uh, long enough for uh, for um, junction uh, village development. I think that's probably going to be another. Uh, well, 
collect it would be our collective problem to figure out how to do it but it won't but it won't necessarily be with the money that we've got on account now because we are i think obliged to spend it Yeah, I realize the process will take a long time, but I am worried that we get a proposal back, you know, the beginning of 2024 is reasonable. It does good things. They say, yeah, we can do this, but we need $2 million in town support, but we need to know you've got it. And that I would like to be able to make that commitment. So I would like to put something, some check mark there for reserve, even though, you know, maybe we can't reserve the full amount that they would ask. And that would be um, for development. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't, it, you know, it doesn't, yeah, for development of. And, and I guess that would, if we did that, that would lead to the next step of, all right, for how much do we think, we, how much do we want to allocate for column one? Is that, you know, two and a half million? Uh, and then, uh, and then how much do we want to, uh, Let's say it's let's say it's two and a half million that leaves in a in our four million dollar budget if that's how we proceed, then you've got one point five million that could be reserved, and maybe that's what we say with the idea that we were, we know that Junction Village is going to need far more than that. Yeah, and it is possible that we might have a transfer fee by then too. Right. It is definitely not dead. Right. We're what? Yeah. Chris, Chris uh, sent me uh, the uh, State House News Service uh, story yeah. today that something something's happening uh, with the uh, with housing, uh, and uh, so so at the State House. So so stay tuned. Um. All right. So how how to so I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna, it's difficult for me to see all your faces here. So I'm going to stop screen sharing. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. And all right. So I see Carlin uh, with the hand up. Carlin. Thank you. Carlin Reed, 83 Wits End. So um, I'm joined a little bit late. Am I under, correct in understanding that the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust? is choosing not to fund the emergency tenant rental assistance program from housing trust funds. I know that Rich is, seems to be rather adamant about it and I thoroughly respect it and that's perfectly fine, but I didn't get a sense of how the other folks on the trust feels about the emergency, the one-time um, allocation for the Hugh Cargill Trust. Have you folks, are you folks ready to make a decision or have you made a decision on that? I'd like to report back to the cargo committee. No, we no, we haven't. I, I asked uh, uh, Chris uh, for any to get us any feedback from the trust, uh, the Hugh Cargill Trust, and the town manager's office is not aware of any. Okay, their meeting is September nineteen. So I just wanted to know what to report back to them about today's information. If you've made a decision, fine. If you haven't made a decision, that's fine too. Just yeah. What my, should I tell them? Yeah, my, my advice for see, I, 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 I think it's even more difficult for the trust to to fund an emergency housing program than it is to to do a, a rental housing program. Uh, I don't, and I don't think the CPA is a is a the CPA may not be able to be a funding source for emergency housing. It's not community housing, so it doesn't qualify. Uh, and and um, that so I, I if if I were if I were an agency that was looking to fund that program I'd stand in line for the ARPA funding. Gotcha. Okay. Although so that's I although that's, I don't really know I don't know what the the 
the uh, parameters uh, criteria going to be for that. But that's a line that doesn't have any, there are no rules. For, for, for so that's, that, that, so. That's, a, that's a no vote. Is that, am I clear on that? I see two, but I didn't hear from the others. But if, you, if that's fine, that's fine. Just let me know what to say. So, you know, the difficult, uh, there's a need. There's no question about the need. Mm -hmm. The difficult thing here is that the an entity like Q Cargill is not submitting an application to CPC or is not, you know, we need the entity to step up. Okay. All right. I'll let them know that the trust is not interested. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it very much. Well, if they reach out to the trust that I can tell them I can have the same conversation. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's important that that every agency find the right funding source for them and we're not gonna be the right funding source for everybody. It's I'm just not now anyway, and uh, not with not with our limited funds and, and charge. Uh, Stefan, hand, hand up. Thank you. Keith and uh, trust committee members, at, at the risk of slightly exceeding my authority, I just did want to remind you that in the sort of longer term funding applications, nothing on the table right now, that the housing authority has been tossing around the idea of buying one-off uh, condominium units and turning them when they become available in the market and making them into housing authority properties that would be held for rent. And if they were to do that, um, the financing that has been tossed around is would include some money from the housing authority, uh, potentially a mortgage, potentially not, and some money from some other town sources. And so if if a suitable unit were to come on the market and we could not be outbid on it, uh, we might be coming to you or others with a short-term request for a couple hundred thousand for one unit. Um, so, with I'm the idea that it would be SHI eligible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not suggesting you put that on the chart but I just wanted to put it out there for sort of store in the back of your memory because you might hear about it again. That the, 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 um, the Housing Authority has discussed that. We have not formally voted to go ahead with anything specific, but I just wanted to mention that on background. Yeah, I'm not totally opposed, but I have the same concern that I have, you know, that I'd rather put money we give to the Houser, to the housing authority into creating new units rather than, you know, simply moving a unit down the income scale. I think I, I agree with you, uh, Rich. I think that in this case, it would be moving from market rate or market. Yeah, if we could do that. I certainly would. Agree. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, I think that the uh, I think that by identifying those projects that I had shown up on the screen, that uh, we could put together a. I think that would give uh, Chris and I enough information to put a dollar to atta attach a dollar number to the total of each column simply for for explaining you know the order of magnitude but it, but it would not commit um uh i'm i'm fine with having our projects not include um not including specific numbers in these in uh by project that we can it, i'll i'll use the the form that I I showed you here, which is which is actually an excerpt of how the grant application goes, the the, the numbers uh, are appear in a in an attachment, which I think we could get by by 
in the attachment, just maybe incorporating. There are detailed descriptions of each of, of some of the projects, and I uh, and I think I can just pull those into the main document and not use the and not use the uh, the other document uh, as an attachment, which is this. In this form, it's got numbers. We don't need the numbers, but I will show. It, but we can include a narrative describing the project, each project as we understand it. I like that approach personally. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 fine with me. I mean, do you want a a, a motion to essentially approve no. the check sheet you just submitted with, you know, explanatory material to be provided by you and Chris? Well, I think uh let's see. Uh I think for purposes of the motion, um I think um we'll take this all under the the app the grant application that's going in to this to the CPC, which the trust has already voted to authorize the chair to submit. Good. So with your feedback, this helps me know what the form of the grant application should be. And I'm just saying for to help the the, the CPC understand what we're about that approximately X million dollars is needed to advance projects this year and Y million dollars to advance project in future years. The total of those two is four, the 4.1 million of our budget at a minimum and that we are gonna need more money we know to do a project like uh, Junction Village. And I think that's how I'll, I, I would phrase it. Okay. So if that sounds good, I wouldn't, I, we sort of, the policy input and direction I was looking for is there. I think that we would probably want to schedule uh, a, a further vote at a later date on the matter of, of uh, if, you know, this is this is sort of what it, this is the policy input input on what the allocations should be, and then the a next step should be for us to invite. Uh, grant applications from uh, as they become uh, as they become available but i think we should do that probably on a one by one basis as projects become available it's it's uh you know i'd want to meet with I, I um and we need not do that tonight we can do that at a future meeting um so i if I may, just one other item. Sure. Um, there is a reference to um, essentially a friendly forty B, and mm -hmm. we don't we don't know that, right? A friendly friendly. Yeah, I didn't write the word friendly in this application. No, no not friendly, but you called it yeah. a host host community. Oh, a host community agreement. Yeah. We don't know that, right? We don't know that there will be, but that's the, those are the terms that we express to the select board and that they in turn express to mass housing. That um, that they are that they the select board said that they're, it's the it's the, their intent to negotiate a host community agreement with the developer, and told mass housing so in the letter that went in. Okay, thank you for that reminder. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I, I mean, it was a suggestion that we made, but I felt bold enough that we could act, would actually put it in when, in when the select board. You're, you're right. It did go in the letter that was sent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, any, I think we're, I think all of the um, input that I was going to need for uh, finishing the, the grant application. Uh, we got tonight, so that's great. And I appreciate your time. Um, Chris is waving goodbye, right? Because he's, I will catch up with him on Thursday and he's got, he's his calendar is busier than mine, I'll tell you. So uh, as are many of your calendars. So, uh, so uh, with that, I think that we are at the point of public statements. 
before before that. Oh yeah, do, yeah. Do you, do you need a motion authorizing the submission of the application? I, I the 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 trust did vote to authorize the chair to submit it uh, at our meeting on August twenty second, but I did say that I would come back with the grant with the draft for your comment. So I so I've got the vote to 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 authorize it, and I think we're I think we're square there. Right. Yeah, thank you, uh, Carlin. Hi, Carlin Reed again, eighty three would said thank you very much for your consideration for the uh, rental assistance. I really appreciate that. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. All right. Uh, I our next. Uh, Keith, I just want to check one more thing that I mentioned. Oh, sure, sure. In yeah. the beginning, um, I I don't recall if you captured it or not, or what your position was. Um, that the 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 final um, application that goes into CPC. The intent is that we're also recommending to CPC that they also fund some of these projects if they receive applications. Is that the intent? Well, I think I'm going to take that out uh, because I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the other. I guess I really don't know what the other applications are. Try as I might to have them all identify themselves. Okay, good. Before Friday, and and no one is, so yeah. I think we'll just take that part out. Okay, good. Uh, and we can we can certainly take up votes in the future to support sure. applications that we like, and we're definitely going to vote to support the uh, the uh, the uh, town funding for regional housing services, and hope to uh, hope to be able to support others as well. So, uh, so we'll take so we'll take out take out the uh, the CPA. Uh, others applications from others. Okay, I'll take that column out. All right. Any uh, any there was, column, there was some wording to that effect as well. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, go through here um, to. Uh, I remember where almost every word is. <laughs> Except the except the ones that Chris added, and so I'm going to double check with him. So, um, and I will. Um, should we schedule a next meeting, or I have a feeling that I ought to check with Carrie to see what her schedule is before we do our next one. Uh, or do you want to pick uh, two weeks from tonight? I think we should pick two weeks, and if Carrie can't do it, we can pick another. Yeah, okay. So how does uh, 5 plus 14, the 19th, work Tuesday, September 19th at 5 p.m.? Is that okay? For me. All right. So let me just double check and see that it works for me and it does okay so tuesday september 19th at five o'clock will be our next meeting tuesday september 19th 5 p.m is there a motion to adjourn from linda <laughs> I'm always the one adjourning. It looks like I want out of here. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Motion by Linda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Rich. All right. So on that um, motion uh, to adjourn, roll call. Linda? Aye. And thank you. Thank you. Mike? Aye. Uh, thanks for all your work on this, Keith. And good night, everybody. I said I wouldn't, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I, Chris's help was, was invaluable as well. Thanks. Uh, Rich. Um, hi. And again, thanks. I know how much time you put into, into this. Um, sometimes I think process is our most important product, but uh, uh, I do appreciate how much we have to do to create that process. Right. Thanks so much. And Keith, aye. So that motion passes uh 
of four to nothing, and the meeting is adjourned at 6.16 p.m. Wow. All right. Thanks, Thank all. Thank you. Uh, okay. Bye.